if you've ever experienced anxiety, first off, what I want to say, like not just being a little anxious about something that's coming up, but like fearful anxiety. I just want to say, I am sorry. I wish I could take that away from you because people who have never experienced that don't know it's really uncomfortable, which is, which is the lightest way to say it. But if you have experienced anxiety and you're on an intuitive journey, sometimes you might have had moments where you wondered is what just bubbled up in my mind intuition or is it my anxiety? Because anxiety is, it's kind of a creature. I heard this wonderful person say such a helpful uh, tool for working with anxiety is to personify your anxiety, create it and, and understand that your anxiety is not you. It's, it's not you, it's something else. And so create like a, a little mean little monster or something and imagine a mean monster and, and know that that mean monster is your anxiety. It's not you. It's not what you're focused on or you're thinking or you're intuitively gathering anxiety is, um, you know, it's an imbalance. So I want to talk about the imbalance of anxiety and how to distinguish between imagination or possibly a fear-based thought or a thought that comes from your anxiety, not from you, from your anxiety. So Anxiety itself, let's start with that. First off, personify it. I heard this recently and I thought, this is so brilliant. When you are in an anxious moment, when you're having anxiety, understand that that's not you. That's your anxiety. Bring it out. Imagine a little creature in front of you and say, you're the one saying this. (laughs) You're the one doing this because I don't really believe I'm not okay. And I don't really believe that you know, uh, people hate me, or I don't really believe that, you know, uh, fill in the blank with the anxiety statements that come through our minds. That's you, you, you little monster, put them in like a cute little outfit or something. I don't know. You know, I mean, kind of make it a little bit funny. Don't make him scary looking, make it a little bit humorous. Right. But separating that out from you and knowing that those thoughts aren't you, those thoughts are your anxiety is a, is a, wonderful, wonderful suggestion. And I heard that recently and I thought, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Now, what is anxiety energetically? Now I'm not going to talk about what anxiety is like clinically or medically or, or, you know, psychologically, I'm going to talk today about what it is spiritually. In essence, anxiety is your three bodies being out of alignment. What are the three bodies? (laughs) We have the physical body. We know what that is. We have the programming body, which is our our linear mind. It's our human fear-based mind. And then we have the spiritual body. So we have the spiritual body, programming body, physical body. When we are in our most confident, comfortable, peaceful, blissful states, those three bodies are aligned. When one of those bodies is unaligned with the other two, This can cause a whole plethora of things, one of which is anxiety. So something is off somewhere and to get that alignment back in place is really, really helpful. One alignment tool that I absolutely love is GCP and the the grounding in GCP. And I'll give a link in here below for the GCP uh, video that you can watch to learn how to do it. The, the grounding in GCP relates to the physical body. The clearing in GCP relates to the programming body. And then the um, protective piece relates to the spiritual body. And when you do this practice in the order that it, it's done, what you're doing is you're lining up the three bodies. So GCP can help with anxiety. It can help you to um, give yourself that mental space to respond instead of react. It can help you to uh, feel more grounded, not so lost, not so, you know, um, there's a, there's kind of this out of control feeling with anxiety that is just unnerving and GCP can help with that. Now, is GCP going to get rid of all of it? Maybe not. Maybe you have to stay open to every single possibility, right? So maybe. It can, uh, but I do know I have taught thousands and thousands of students all across the globe. And I do know that the feedback on their anxiety reducing 
by using GCP has been numerous. So that would be the first place that I would start. Secondly, like I said before, which was uh, something I had heard recently, personify your anxiety. You know, give it a name if you want to. P probably not a name of anybody you like, you know. I mean, you could give it a name of some you're not fond of. We'll say that. Um, but personify it, you know. Understand that this is a thing. It's not you. You're not really worried about, you know, getting everything done outside before the sun goes down. You know, like, and, and things like that that bring you panic and anxiety it's the anxiety that, that's do, doing it. It's not your thought. So GCP, personify your anxiety. Now what we get into is whatever tool works for you, what to balance those three bodies, okay? Beyond GCP, what is gonna work? Because GCP will get you into alignment, but if something is off alignment and it needs to be healed, meaning if it's physical, work toward physically healing. If it's um, emotional, work toward emotional healing and doing that inner work. Spiritually, you don't need to be healed. Your spiritual body is, is legit just made up of 100% unconditional love. So there's not a lot of healing that needs to happen there. But when your bodies are out of alignment, here's the interesting thing. It means it's time to heal because you can be in alignment and have triggers and issues and things like that, you can. But when you can't get into alignment, it means something is, it's time to heal that particular something. Now we have triggers, we have old wounds. And while it's not commonly said, <laughs> those wounds, those triggers, those reactions that we have can actually, um, help our path to unfold in beautiful ways in the future. I know that's an odd way of looking at it, but if we have an old wound that causes us to be um, more driven, then that driven is going to get us to our final balanced state. If we have an old wound that causes us to slow down, maybe that slow down state gets us to our final destination of, of you know, calm and balance and bliss. It's when you start to become unaligned that that old wound or that trigger or that issue is saying to you, hey, I can't stay with you and you be aligned at the same time anymore, okay? So an unalignment of those three bodies, which shows up as, um, you know, it can show up as a physical thing. It can show up as a, as a, as a mind thing, as anxiety. That imbalance is just saying, hey, there's something here that you no longer need to carry. So it's time to do something about it. Now, what do you do about it? You have to find that for yourself. Is it talk therapy? Is it uh, writing? Is it journaling? Is it um, finding a community of like-minded people that you can connect with? Is it, um, you know, tapping exercises, yoga? What is it that's going to help you release that? Focus on that. Step into that with the idea of getting the three bodies aligned. Now, intuition flows best when those three bodies are in alignment. Anxiety throws those off. <laughs> so it's tough because we want our intuition to be able to flow through us with ease and then anxiety can get in the way. So anxiety will do two things. First off, it'll get in the way of the flow of the intuition. So you ask yourself an intuitive question and perhaps you don't get an answer, or perhaps you don't get a sign. Some of that can be um, anxiety acting as a, a sort of clutter on top of your intuition, which blocks it. The other thing anxiety can do is it can be subtle enough that you do get an answer, but you're not sure if the answer is your anxiety or intuition. And I'll tell you this, if a message comes through, but it's not an intuitive message, it's your anxiety speaking, that little monster, if it's your anxiety speaking, there will be a fear-based underlining energy to that message. Years and years of using my intuition, thousands of students that I've trained to use their intuition, when an intuitive message comes through, it's never fear-based. It's never fear-based. If you go to a reader and they tell you something scary, they are not tapping in. Mm -mm. If they tell you something heavy, okay, or, you know, like this is something you should really pay attention to, and perhaps it's a heavy subject, yes, they could be tapping in and just getting you to get your focus into the right place, which is a wonderful thing. 
But if they tell you that you're going to die at 22 or that you're going to get in a horrible car crash or that your spouse is going to die, they are not tapped in. I will tell you that right now because intuitive information comes from our guides, our higher self, okay, from source. All of those are not going to tell you something that is going to cause you to go into a fear-based spiral because it goes against what they want. Your team on the other side, your higher self on the other side, their job is to get you from A to B. Okay. And they're not going to tell you something that is going to terrorize you because it's not going to get you to be, it's going to stop you in your tracks. You're going to be frozen. And it's, it's just not going to work. I have never seen an accurate, intuitive deliver information that was that fear-based anxiety is fear-based. The information that comes to your anxiety is a worry thought. So if a thought hits you and it's in the category of worry, it most likely is your anxiety. If a thought hits you and it's more in the category of information, you know, not scary information, not doomsday, not this might happen, not worry about what's coming, but information, then you know it's your intuition. I'll put it to you another way like this. We all have things that happen, good and bad, okay? Our guides are going to tell us, or they're going to deliver the intuitive information. They're going to give us pieces of information that we need to get us in the direction that we're going. Now, maybe there is a difficult part of your life that you do have to walk through. It's part of our existence, okay? They're not going to tell you that's coming up. It will alter the situation. It will uh, spin it out of control. <laughs> you might, you know, change the flow of what's going to happen in the future because you're scared. So they're not going to tell you a piece of information that scares you because they know you will try to change the outcome. They know that the outcome is part of your natural path. It does have to happen. I'll, I'll use a small example. Okay. We have, um, well, it's kind of not small, but for pet lovers out there, our dogs, our cats, our frogs, our birds, our turtle, turtles, they don't have a, a really long lifespan, okay? And if you had a pet and you didn't know that, and a guide came in and said, your dog's going to die next year, that whole year is now going to be spent differently that fear statement that came through, that scary thing that comes through intuitively, if it was intu intuitive, is going to change that entire year, how you function with the dog, what you're doing, and, and it's going to pull you completely off path. So the dog will pass. It's part of your lifespan. It's part of your life path. It's going to happen. It's unfortunate. We don't like to experience these things but they're certainly not going to infuse fear going in to a situation that's difficult. I've never seen it with an accurate intuitive. Never. I have seen intuitives tell people scary things, which is sad. I met a young man who was 21 years old and um, an intuitive had convinced him when he was like 17 that he was going to die at 22. So he graduated high school. He, um, I don't even know if he graduated high school. He didn't go to college. He didn't go toward any dreams or hopes or anything. He's like, I'm dying next year. And he believed it. We did a reading. We got enough proof through the reading that I was able to help him open up to the possibility that he's not and start to live through his life again. But it was really sad. It was really sad. Now, if something comes up that says, oh, you know, th this is coming, that is anxiety. If it's information, it's not anxiety. But back to the information piece. Sometimes they will give you information to um, take that job or move into that house or, or meet that person or, or sometimes, you know, they'll guide you to your next, um, you know, partner, and then the partner doesn't work out and you're like, why did you guide me to that partner, right, very common. Why did I have to go through that because it was part of your life path. It was part of your life path. We do have to have situations that we go through that are uncomfortable or not perfect. And they do need to guide you through the ones that are necessary to have. Okay. When they guide you, they're not going to say that person's going to hurt you because then you wouldn't go with that person. The person is going to hurt you emotionally, hopefully only, but 
they're gonna, you know, it's, you, we've all been in relationships that are uncomfortable. That person's gonna say things or do things that, that hurt your feelings. And then you're gonna get out of it and you're gonna have strength and understanding coming out of that that you didn't have before. You're gonna be a different person coming out of that than when you went into it. That different person is the person that's ready for your actual soulmate who's gonna treat you the best that you've ever been treated in your life, okay? So we do have to go through these things to kind of get some tools under our tool belt in order to step into our final destination, which is what we've been looking forward all to all these years. Now, if they want to get you there, your intuition will say, this is the person, here's the sign, okay? If it's anxiety, it would be this person's gonna hurt you and then you wouldn't go with them. So overall, this is what I want you to do. GCP, <laughs> personify your anxiety and know that anxiety is, um, it's connected to being out of balance. Find some tool, whether it's helpful YouTube videos or therapy or a community, whatever it is, yoga, like I said, find a tool to focus on getting your bodies into alignment. When you do that, it's going to be easier to distinguish between imagining or in, not imagination, intuition and anxiety. But in the meantime, intuition is going to feel like just information. Anxiety is going to have that layer of worry on top of it. Okay. Know that they're not going to give you scary information because it's going to take you away from your final destination, which is what you are growing and thriving and moving toward, which is a beautiful thing. It's a very beautiful thing. So take care of yourself. You're worth it. You're awesome. Move toward balancing, find something to do that helps you with inner work. And just know if something comes through and you think it might be intuitive, but it seems scary, let it go. Clear the blank slate, just wipe it all away and go, okay, no, I'm going to wait until I am in a calm space. And then I'm going to ask the question to see if that information comes through again in a different way, or if it doesn't come through at all. And if it doesn't come through at all, it was that little monster. So take care of yourself. You're awesome. Tell yourself that you are uh, wonderful and compassionate and loving because you are. I just want you to remind yourself of that because we can get lost with that as well when we suffer from anxiety. Mm.